In client server architecture, we have a client and a server. The client requests and the server responds. In our case, we send requests through browser to the server. The server responds accordingly with the response. In general, the architecture looks like this. We have a client, we have a web server, and we have the application. The WSGI server is just like a middleware between the web server and the Python application. We shall understand about it in the next section. In our project, we will use engines as our web server, UWSGI as our WSGI server. We are going to use Flask as the framework for our Python app. Now, let us try to briefly understand about this particular architecture where we have the web server, WSGI server and Python app. A traditional web server does not have any way to run Python based applications. So in the late 1990s, a developer came up with an Apache module called mod Python to execute arbitrary Python code and it was used for several years till 2000s. However, mod Python wasn't a standard specification. It was just an implementation that allowed Python code to run on a server. As mod Python's development stalled and security vulnerabilities were discovered, the community realized the need for a consistent way to execute Python code for web applications. Therefore, the Python community came up with WSGI as standard so interface. WSGI is now the accepted approach for running Python web applications. The WSGI server means web server gateway interface. It is like a middleware between the web server and Python app. So the WSGI standard should be implemented by both the server side and the application side. If we are using any standard Python framework, such as Flask, Django, etc., we don't need to worry about how the WSGI standard is implemented on the application side. Also, if we are using a standard WSGI container like Green Unicorn, UWSGI, G-Event, etc., we don't need to worry about how the server side of the WSGI standard is implemented. When using Flask, it comes with an inbuilt WSGI server named Workzuke to handle the requests. It is light and easy to use in testing and development environments, but it is not suitable for the production environment. Hence, we need to switch to another WSGI like UWSGI, Unicorn, or G-Event while deploying an app in production. Now let us see the general flow, how it works. When the client sends a request, the request invokes the web server. The web server can serve static files, if any, like images, CSS files, etc., and can also act as a reverse proxy and invokes the WSGI server. The WSGI server is invoked by the web server for any dynamic content. The WSGI server invokes a callable object of the Python app. The Python app invokes the route method or returns the appropriate response HTML template. We will need to configure how the web server needs to respond to a client request, how to forward the request, etc. Further, we also need to configure the WSGI server to let it know what is the callable object that it needs to invoke, where it is located, etc. In our case, the architecture looks something like this. We don't need to configure the engine server. We will use a container which uses engines UWSGI for Flask applications. So the only thing which we need to do is to tell the UWSGI where the callable object of our Flask app is located. So the flow is like this. When the browser sends a request, the request invokes the engine's web server. The web server acts as a reverse proxy and invokes the UWSGI server. The UWSGI server invokes 
a callable object of the flask cap. The flask cap invokes the route method and returns the appropriate response HTML template. We need to configure the UWS GI server file to let it know what is the callable object that it needs to invoke, where is it located, etc. We are going to create a flask app to build a user wishlist where the user can save his or her favorite place in full. Each username can have associated favorite place and favorite food, and those details will be stored in the PostgreSQL database. Also, since memory reads are cheaper than the database access, we will store the details of the user in the Redis in memory store for faster access in the future. You can know more about Redis and Postgres in the official links given here. So in a bird's eye view, this is the project architecture. As you could observe, we will have three containers in all, one container for each service, namely web service, database service, and cache service. We will define these services in the Docker Compose file. We will also link the web service with the database service and the cache service for communication.